Fortnite has been taking the world by storm recently. Yes, the pun was intended, both with its interesting PvE concepts and its insanely fun battle royale mode. Although, let's be honest, that's the main thing people care about. But there are tons of things about Fortnite development cycle that plagued it during the early days and is still plaguing it now. Welcome everybody to Trending 10, Nemo here. And today we're gonna be counting down 10 things about Fortnite that you probably didn't know. The first half of this video is gonna be some interesting things about the development and the behind the scenes aspects of the game. While the second half will give you Fortnite players some helpful tricks and tips to utilize in game. Now, first things first, development on Fortnite started a long time ago. The game was first revealed at the 2011 Spiked Video Game Awards but it's unknown exactly how long it was being worked on before the reveal. Although Donald Mustard of Epic Games once mentioned that the reveal had happened only three weeks after the concept was created, meaning that the game had been stuck in development hell for over six years now. According to Epic Games Vice President Mike Fisher, the game was announced far too soon, and they kind of brought the development hell on themselves for initially trying to push it out the door. When you consider the history of Epic Games, the concept for Fortnite seems pretty out of the ordinary, and that was actually an intentional decision. Epic Games was founded in 1991 in Cary, North Carolina, and first got their start in the late 90s with the creation of the Unreal Engine. The Unreal Engine was very impressive, and after the company started licensing out the tech to other companies, Epic's profits soared, allowing them to create their own games in-house, such as the legendary multiplayer FPS Unreal Tournament and the smash hit Gears of War franchise. But a common theme with Epic Games was most of their games involved multiplayer shooter action, usually resulted in plenty of blood and gore. Epic stated that Fortnite was going to be a way to get away from that. Gears of War creator and Epic's design director Cliff Blazinski stated in an interview that while they loved making over-the-top and violent multiplayer games, they wanted to try to branch out and do something unusual. Blazinski was actually pretty involved with the Fortnite project at first, but ended up leaving the project when he left Epic Games in 2012. Number eight, Fortnite was originally supposed to come out in 2013 as a PC exclusive, which was confirmed during the 2012 San Diego Comic-Con. However, Epic experienced many problems with the new Unreal Engine and were forced to delay the release. Fortnite originally started development on the Unreal Engine 3, but when the Unreal Engine 4 was completed and the team started to transition work over to it, there were tons of technical issues and the game simply would not have been ready for a 2013 release. So rather than release the game in 2013 on an older engine, Epic decided to delay the game so that they could work out the problems with the new engine and release the game when it looked and played as good as possible. After the 2013 delay, it was never stated when the official release would be, and many started to wonder if the game would come out at all. Number seven, the shift in engines wasn't the only thing that started to cause issues with Fortnite's development. As I'm sure you guys are all aware, the past few years have been filled with microtransactions and the shift from games as a product to many companies seeing games as a service. Well, this sudden shift in the industry caused a few speed bumps in Fortnite's development as the game was originally supposed to be another game that you would buy for $60. But the delays in development gave Epic Games some extra time to reevaluate how they wanted to approach Fortnite's eventual release. Would it be a regular full price game or would it be a more of a service structure? Ultimately, Epic Games decided to go with the service approach to Fortnite, stating that the game will be free to play and run on microtransactions to financially support it. Number six, the game finally started to get back on its feet again after the development of Paragon, another online Epic Games title that took the focus away from Fortnite. Paragon started development around late 2014, early 2015, and is currently in open beta with the official release date not yet set in stone. The game itself is a fresh, unique take on the MOBA genre, allowing you to get right into the action with your army as opposed to controlling them from above like Dota or League of Legends. Paragon actually uses many assets from the early versions of Fortnite as Epic wanted to get Paragon out as quickly to capitalize on the MOBA craze that took over the gaming industry and esports scene during the 2010s. Because of Epic wanting to get Paragon done as quickly as possible, Fortnite was pretty much on hold. Thankfully, once Paragon entered early access in early 2016, work on Fortnite was able to continue. Number five, despite Paragon taking much of the official development time over at Epic, Fortnite still made a little bit of progress. As Epic held multiple alpha and beta tests in order to evaluate the online aspects of the game while the development team continued to work on Paragon. After Paragon's early access release, work on Fortnite continued taking the results from the alphas and betas into account 
in order to fine tune the balancing and iron out bugs. Although after the closed beta in 2015, the game would not be playable by the public for almost two years when it finally entered early access in July of 2017. This early access period went very well, especially with the addition of the standalone battle royale mode, which went live in September of 2017. Number 4, the battle royale mode is really what's taking most of people's Fortnite focus, but people seem to forget that there is so much more to the game than just that. In fact, the concept for the PvE sections of the full release are super interesting. Fortnite takes place after 98% of the Earth's population disappears, leaving the remaining 2% to find off strange zombie-like creatures while also doing their best to survive intense storms. The PvE has been described by Epic Games as Minecraft meets Left 4 Dead, as you and your friends are put into a sandbox environment allowing you to create different structures and craft new weapons and items in order to fight off hordes and hordes of enemies. Number 3, because of the game's scattered development and also the fact that it is still technically not not finished, there's many aspects of the map that aren't fully completed, leading to some helpful details. Perhaps the most helpful unfinished aspect of the game's Battle Royale map are the bushes. Because the Battle Royale mode was not a part of the original development and was pretty much rushed through programming, many bushes around the map actually don't have hitboxes around them, allowing you to completely hide inside of them. Not all of the bushes are like this, but if you play the game a lot, you'll probably find that there are many types of bushes and foliage that don't actually restrict you from just walking inside of them. You can definitely take advantage of this the next time you're playing the battle royale mode, as no one expects to get attacked by a bush unless it's a moving bush. Number two, when you play Fortnite battle royale, one of the main aspects is the chests, and just about everyone is scrambling to get their hands on them. To newer players, these chests seem to be spawning out at random locations, but it's actually not like that at all. The chests will always spawn in a set locations, although which locations are randomly selected by the game at the beginning of the match. Whenever you play a match of Battle Royale and you see a chest, take note of where you found it, as you will pretty much always see a chest there again at some point in the future. Certain chest spawn points are more likely than others, so also take note of which locations seem to spawn more consistently and which ones are more rare. Start mentally mapping out paths to get from chest to chest when you spawn in, knowing the chest spawns will instantly give you an advantage over other players who aren't as familiar with the game. Now at the number one spot, this is a tip for those of you who like to play in teams. While playing solo is a ton of fun, playing in teams is a whole other beast and it forces you to drastically change up your playstyle. As I'm sure you all know, building is a very key aspect of Fortnite, regardless of whether or not you're playing in a squad. Now, when you're in a group and you have the idea to build a structure, you may be tempted to put all the work to get it done as quickly as and efficiently as possible, but that's actually a pretty terrible strategy. When your team is building something, there should always be at least one, preferably two of your team members, keeping a lookout to make sure there's no enemies are nearby and ones who are just waiting to pick you guys off as soon as you start working on the structure. Next time you play in teams, make sure you always have someone with some good guns, keeping a lookout while the rest of you guys are building. That's gonna wrap it up with this video let me know what you thought of it in the comment section below do me a favor hit the like button subscribe to the channel and until next time this has been nemo from trinity 10 and i will talk to you guys on the next one